This is the first of 10 lessons on critical and creative thinking. These lessons apply to future problem solving, but can also be expanded to apply to anything you are studying, both in school, on e-learning, or even within problem solving with your family and your friends. When we are solving problems, it is very important to think about creative thinking and critical thinking, as both of these aspects are important. They work together so that you can generate a lot of ideas and then also focus in on those great ideas to solve your problems. So what is creative thinking? Creative thinking is the process of generating new and many ideas. There are many, many definitions of creative thinking, but this is the basis of what happens when you think creatively. When you are thinking creatively, it is very important that you apply the principle of deferred judgment. That means you are not evaluating or choosing your best ideas during creative thinking. We have some guidelines that we like to apply when we are using creative thinking. The first guideline is that we do not want to criticize either our own ideas or the ideas of others and we also don't want to praise those ideas we don't want to make any judgment at this point the second guideline is quantity we want as many ideas as possible to help us get a lot of ideas we can combine or improve on ideas that are already there we call this hitchhiking or piggybacking taking an idea and expanding upon it to create a new idea. And the last thing, when we are thinking creatively, it is perfectly fine to use freewheeling. That is when you have wild and crazy ideas, you go ahead and allow them at this stage. So how can we improve our creative thinking? We're going to talk about five tools that we have to share in using for creative thinking. The first of the five tools is the morphological matrix. We're going to talk about that one in this video series. The other tools, scamper, attribute listing, brainstorming, and force fitting will be explored in other lessons. Here is one way the morphological matrix may look. You will see that there are numbers down the side from one until zero. You also see that there are four columns. You might use a morphological matrix with three columns, but in this instance, we're going to use four columns. We're going to list some characters. Here is just a list that I've jotted down so we can move through this example. We have a variety of characters from Mickey Mouse to Bill Gates to a ballet dancer to a talking goldfish to Selena Gomez. The next thing we're going to do is think about some settings. The zoo on a riverboat, in a greenhouse, or in Paris, a wide variety of settings. What are some goals? To solve a mystery, to get rich, to skydive, to become famous. And what are some obstacles? Bankruptcy, outlaws, travel plans canceled, fear. So if we were asked to write a story and we needed help coming up with a unique idea, we might use a morphological matrix to help us. How would we use the numbers? Well, I, in this example, am going to use the last four numbers of my phone number, so 8902. So I see here that the first eight is a talking goldfish, the nine in a greenhouse, the zero, escape, and the two outlaws. So using this example with my phone number, I would have a talking goldfish who's in a greenhouse trying to escape because there are some outlaws coming to try to get him. Certainly, you could see that there might be some very entertaining aspects of a story once I started elaborating on this character and the setting and the goal and the obstacle. This is just one way to use the morphological matrix. If you don't know what to write about, that's the example we just used. That's a great way to use the morphological matrix. Another way, perhaps you are interested in writing a blockbuster movie or a screenplay, or maybe you're assigned to do so in one of your classes. 
the title of your columns could be a leading man or a leading lady, the supporting star, the setting, and the plot thicken. So what are some different things you could generate? You'd put those in the column underneath it. Then you would use a set of numbers uh, to determine which ones would create some unique situations for you. You can also use the morphological matrix to help you determine a science fair project. You could do your dependent variable in the first column, your independent variable in the second column, and then your treatment in the third column. In this instance, you would only have those specific things for a science fair project. So how do we use the morphological matrix in future problem solving? Well, there are many different ways, but I'm going to give you an example uh, how to use the morphological matrix when developing challenges. Um, so I'm going to think about the topic that some of our students are studying right now in preparation for their affiliate bowls, and that is the topic of living in poverty. So I have uh, just finished looking over the readings, research, and resources, and I want to come up with some new and unique ways uh, to develop some challenges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list people and agencies, I'm going to list places, and I'm going to list some obstacles. And this time, instead of using my phone number, I'm gonna roll some dice uh, for a new combination. So here's the morphological matrix uh, that I completed when looking at those articles. So some of the people uh, that I noticed in the research was the United Nations, the World Bank, volunteers, asylum seekers, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and Children in Poverty. So these were all uh, people that I noted in my research. Where are some places that this is happening? Again, I made a list of these from my research. Some obstacles uh, that I noted, and, and these, are, these are real things. This is not uh, like the creative ones that we came up with in the morphological matrix about the story. This is actually uh, facts from our research here. So I've listed those um, on here. So now you see I only have one through six over here, which matches the options on a dice. So I'm gonna roll three dice. So my first dice here. Okay, I have a two. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the World Bank organization. Okay, I'm going to roll my next dice. I have a three. Uh, so the World Bank organization is going to be in suburban areas in the USA. And my last one is a one. The poverty cycle does not seem to end. So I might come up with a challenge that the World Bank organization who's trying to help suburban areas in the United States of America is having the obstacle of the poverty cycle uh, not being able to, to end. They're not seeing any progress there. So that is certainly a challenge. Um, maybe it's not the perfect people and agency. Uh, maybe it's um, volunteers would, would match that better. So that's okay. The purpose of the morphological matrix is just to get us thinking uh, in a new and variety of combinations and ways. So don't worry if things don't work out perfectly, but it has us thinking and it has us looking at things from different perspectives. And that is the purpose of our creative thinking tools and especially uh, the tool focused on this lesson, which is the tool of the morphological matrix. Thanks for joining us and we look forward to having you join us in other sessions on critical and creative thinking tools. Thank you.